All right, so now we have the next, next speaker, um, Akira Nukuda. Uh, so Akira is a professor in the Center for Computational Sciences at the University of Tsukuba, um, working on high-performance computing, such as FMT for GPUs, mainly with NVIDIA type processors. So Akira will be giving a talk on accelerated data transfers. So you could go ahead whenever you want. Thanks. Okay, uh, can you, uh, hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah can I you? can see you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I'm Akira Nukara from University of Tsukuba, Japan. Uh, GPU is now very popular and common in high performance computing. GPU has high perform high computational power as, a, as well as high memory bandwidth. Additionally, GPU programming enables generic computation rather than graphics. GPU has dedicated high bandwidth memory, but its capacity is limited. So if the data size is larger than the device memory, we need to copy data between host and device frequently. The bandwidth of PCI Express is much lower than the bandwidth of GPU device memory. So the PCI Express may become the performance bottleneck of GPU applications. Now, many supercomputers are crowd use NVIDIA GPU devices. Many of these compute nodes equip multiple GPU devices for better cost efficiency. And the GPU devices are directly connected to each other by NVLink, high-speed high network interconnect. The NVLink allows efficient multi-GPU computing. In fact, there are some idle GPU devices on these systems. Typically, there are many single GPU applications running on multi-GPU systems. This is because of complexity of multi-GPU programming. Or for some kinds of computations, single GPU may perform better. In such a case, the application uses only one GPU zero and host CPU. Then GPU one is an idle GPU. So we want to utilize the idle GPU efficiently. So our goal is speed up of the single GPU applications. We focus on the data transfer between host and GPU zero. GPU one is now idle. So we use this GPU one to assist data copy between CPU and GPU zero. Uh, we use the alternative root color, the green, in addition to the direct root color, the red. By using these two roots simultaneously, we can achieve twice bandwidth between host and GPU zero. The proposed method is implemented as runtime library to be applied to single GPU application binary without any modifications. The main target of this work is data transfers between CUDA pinned memory and device memory. For the other cases, GPU-1 cannot improve the data transfer performance. The proposed method asks GPU-1 to perform data transfer between host CPU and GPU-0. It is easy if CUDA memcopy async API function can do this as expected. So we investigate what happens using NVML to measure the usage of each PCI Express and NVLink usage. Uh, first, let's check the normal situation. 
when GPU zero perform the data transfer from host to GPU zero, the usage of PCI Express on GPU zero are detected. The data transfer speed is about 6.8 gigabytes per second. Also on the other di direction, we see 0 0.8 gigabyte per second data transfer. It is necessary for host to device data transfer. Then now, so GPU one performs the same data transfer from host to GPU zero. Strangely, still we see the usage of PCI Express of GPU zero and no usage is detected on NVLink. In case of the other direction, the behavior is the same. From these observations, it seems the CUDA MCOPY Async API delegates the data transfers to GPU zero. If the data transfer is between host and GPU zero. So unfortunately, we cannot, we cannot use the API function for our proposed method. We need to perform the copy operation by CUDA kernels on GPU one. Uh, in CUDA programming, so we use CUDA stream feature to control dependencies between tasks. CUDA programs enqueue tasks such as kernel execution or data transfers into streams. Tasks on same stream must be executed in order, but tasks on different stream can be executed concurrently if resource is available. And this is an example of task scheduling. The data transfers are executed by DMA controller of GPU, and it is exclusively executed for each direction. The kernels can be executed concurrently with data transfers. So then the proposed method will accelerate the data transfers while keeping the dependency defined by stream. This is the first requirement. And the second requirement is for speed up. DMA controller of GPU can perform one data transfer for each direction. So up to two data transfers can be executed concurrently. The proposed method must execute the pair of data transfers using two GPUs at the same timing. Otherwise, CUDA application cannot start the following tasks earlier. And this is a flowchart of the proposed method. The pair of CUDA event record and CUDA stream wait event can be used for cross-device synchronization. When the stream, G, stream on GPU zero is ready to continue this mem copy tasks, first try to get exclusively ex exclusive lock, which indicates the privilege of data transfer for each direction. Then concurrently execute data transfers using CUDA mem copy async API on GPU zero and using kernel on GPU one. After the completion of both data transfers, then release the privilege. In the proposed method, we will execute up to two copy kernels in addition to multiple lock kernels on GPU one. So we need to carefully choose the number of thread blocks for kernels because the number of multi processors are limited. Each of lock kernels 
executes only one thread, but it exclusively occupies a multi processor. So we have to limit the number of threads for copy kernels. Uh, proposed method is implemented as shared object file to be loaded by LD preload. The data transfer will be accelerated transparently if the application binary dynamic, dynamically links to the runtime library. Current implementation replaces only four API functions, CUDA mem copy and CUDA mem copy async perform the data transfers. And when application create a stream on GPU zero, the runtime also creates streams on GPU one and registers a stream pair. CUDA host alloc or CUDA malloc host allocate CUDA pinned memory on host. The runtime adds CUDA host alloc portable flag to allow access from multiple GPUs. And this is an example of bandwidth test program from CUDA samples. The bandwidth test program measures the data transfer speed. The binary is revealed to link CUDA runtime library dy dynamically. Left is normal execution. It shows 6.3 and 6.6 .6 gigabytes per second, respectively. And light is by proposed method. By setting LD preload environment variable, it shows around twice bandwidth. Okay, this is a. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is a specification of the system used in our evaluations. Uh, two GeForce RTX 2080 GPUs are connected to Intel CPU via PCI Express. These two GPUs are connected to each other via NVLink. Each GPU is linked in PCI Express Gen 3, eight lanes. So eight gigabytes per second peak for each direction. NVLink bandwidth is 25 gigabytes per second. And host memory bandwidth is 17.4 gigabytes per second. So PCI Express will be the bottlenecks when two GPU perform concurrent bidirectional data transfers. Copy kernels for single directional data transfers does not require the many thread blocks. And this GPU has 46 March processors, but two thread blocks for host to device, and one thread blocks for device to host is sufficient to achieve the highest bandwidth. This is a bidirectional case. The result is shown in heat map. The red indicates the relatively faster. Unlike the result of single directional data transfer, we need more thread blocks for hosted to device. The optimal speed is achieved with 30 thread blocks for host to device and one thread blocks for device to host, respectively. We use this configuration in the following variation. Now we compare the tra transfer speed using native CUDA and proposed method. This is host to device case. For small data sizes, so actually it is difficult to see. The proposed method is slower than native CUDA. For this side, 
The proposed method has overhead to control two GPUs. The achieved bandwidth with native CUDA is also low. This means the bottleneck is not PCI Express bandwidth, but latency. The proposed method outperforms native CUDA at 256 kilobytes and achieves twice data transfer speed for large data sizes. And this is a device to host case. It is similar to host to device case. The proposed method outperforms native CUDA at 512 kilobytes and achieves twice data transfer speed for large data size. Um, this is a bidirectional case. The result is more complex because there are four kinds of data transfers by two GPUs. The pro proposed method outperform at one megabyte and achieves about twice data transfer speed for large data size. From these results, the proposed method should be applied only for large data size. And in other case, it should be forwarded to native CUDA API using single GPU. Uh, let me summarize this presentation. We propose a novel method to accelerate single GPU application using idle GPU. We focus on the data transfer between host and device. The proposed method uses the alternative route via the idle GPU in addition to the direct route. In order to perform the data transfer by the idle GPU, we need to employ copy kernels because CUDA mem copy async is not available for this purpose. Since proposed method execute multiple GPU kernels on GPU concurrently, we carefully choose the optimal number of thread blocks and achieve twice data transfer speed for large data sizes. The parameter Parameters such as number of thread blocks and threshold depend on each computing environment. But the parameter tuning is very easy. That is, thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, thank you for this um, interesting talk. So we have a few questions that's coming up in the chat. Uh, so the first one is from Michael. The biggest surprise is that the GPU copy kernel appears to deliver the same bandwidth as the DMA engine during the QMEM copy of sync calls. Um, can you comment on, on that? Yeah, so of course, so kernel uh, copy kernel occupies uh, large processors of GPU. So this is the uh, only difference. So uh, PCI Express bandwidth itself is not so high. So it is easy to fill the bandwidth even by kernels. <laughs> So, so most of the, the idle path they're using the NV link connection, or can they also use other PCIe for the alternative path? Excuse me. Uh, um, is it? I have a somewhat follow-up question. So, when you use the alternative path uh, from the idle GPU, right, to help with the data transfer, does it have to be an NV link connection, or can it use another PCIe? Uh, there's a two GPUs on different PCIe. Yeah. Uh, there are no GPU device products with uh, support of two PCI Express routes. So if the bandwidth is shared, so we cannot use this method to accelerate. 
Okay. Thanks. So the next question is, um, can you please explain why the number of blocks needed are different for device to host and host to device data transfer? Uh, so in the single directional case, uh, host to device required more to, to two thread blocks. So this is so not so large, but so as I show the data, so in host to device, so device to host data transfer is also necessary. So to request the host memory data. So that is a reason of the difference. Okay, um, and then we have one more question. Does this methodology scale for faster PCIe connections, for example, by four, by eight, by 16, instead of a relatively slow PCIe, which is only by two? Uh, this method, so yeah, should work. Even uh, yeah, if uh, the PCI Express bundle is is the bottleneck, so but if uh, for latest uh, PCI Gen three uh, Gen four machines, so sometimes so uh, PC host memory bundle is will become the bottleneck. So oh, yeah, that's an interesting point. <laughs> Okay, and the last one is, do you think GP1 must be idle? It's not, it does not seem like the technique requires that much resource. So maybe it's possible to run some workload on GP1 while GP1 is also helping with data transfers. Mm, some workload, uh, means uh, part of the application or other application. So, so I guess it could be from the same application or other application in it, if it's like a multi-tenant co-located type of server. So, so when, when GP1 is helping with the data transfer, can, can GP1 still also do useful computation? So um, it is, not easy to estimate the side effect or overhead <laughs> of this usage. So the proposal okay. has so no advantage, uh, disadvantage or overhead. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so let's thank our speaker. Um, and you know, yeah. if you have any further questions, feel free to send emails, right? Um, so thank you, Akira.